Charcoal is big business in Bamako, the capital of Mali. Almost everybody needs charcoal to cook with, and the population is growing. Maimuna Traore is a charcoal merchant. She's doing well, but her very success is becoming a source of concern. There are fewer and fewer trees. It's scary. If you go out of town, you will see what I mean. An Australian agronomist with the NGO World Vision, Tony Rinaldo, has developed a method of countering the deforestation that affects large parts of Africa. His work won him the Right Livelihood Award, also known as the Alternative Nobel Prize. As land is cleared of the vegetation, the land gradually degrades and becomes less and less productive. Less, uh, less can be grown on it, less profit can be made from it, and people become more desperate. So th there is a very strong link between conflict and land degradation, and also between migration and land degradation. Maimuna Traore tells Rinaldo that she now has to get her charcoal from 160 kilometers away, because sources closer to Bamako have dried up. It's a similar situation in and around many of Africa's big cities. The disappearance of forests and degradation of the land is a huge problem. How, how do we tackle that? Well, fortunately, through farmer-managed natural regeneration, through the regeneration of trees and landscapes, uh, there's a very low-cost, rapid and scalable method to reverse that degradation. In the 1980s, Ronaldo discovered that in many places there are intact underground networks of roots struggling to grow and that pruning shoots can help trees and bushes flourish. World Vision is now promoting the FMNR technique in 24 countries around the world. In Yamariga, in northern Ghana, Samuel Bantang was among the first farmers to adopt it a decade ago. It has changed so much in my village. We used to have to drive our cattle long distances to graze, and thieves could steal them. But now they can graze nearby. But there's still a lot to do. The villagers regularly go out and work on reviving areas of degraded land, applying Renardo's technique, and trim new shoots growing out of old stumps. Farmer-managed natural regeneration isn't complicated. It involves targeted pruning and protecting of new growth. Still, it's very effective. These saplings will hopefully grow into tall trees. We cut some shoots, but leave the bigger ones, just one or two. What we cut away, we use as firewood. The key advantage over planting new trees is that the roots are already there and reach deep into the soil. So even if it rarely rains, they can tap into the groundwater. Trees can also raise the water table, release moisture into the air and fertilize the soil when their leaves fall and decompose. As conditions improved, Samuel Bantang was able to increase his herd. It has helped a lot. Life used to be much harder, but now things are different. We have a proper income, we can look after our families, pay for health insurance and school fees, and everybody has enough to eat. In Yamariga, 82 hectares of land have so far been reforested but large stretches still look like a desert. Degraded dryland regions may have countless intact tree root systems that could yet yield new trees if they're properly tended. Rinaldo organizes conferences across Africa on FMNR, also in countries that are in turmoil, such as Mali. He was recently in Bamako. Rinaldo has devoted his life to restoring Africa's forests. He says regenerating local vegetation improves the lives of millions, and giving people hope can help transform the political landscape as well in many a country. It would transform the whole country. <laughs> Uh, because it has that potential people to be able to be self-sufficient on their own land 
they're not going to be so interested in, in joining a fight somewhere else. They, they have families to raise, they have aspirations on how they would like to lead their life. Cities such as Bamako consume vast amounts of natural resources, even as they become ever more scarce. The restoration of vegetation around cities and elsewhere can improve people's quality of life and perhaps reduce the potential for violence and conflict.